rate of change for our word problems. Remember rate of change. We think of slope. And remember when we think of slope, we find our slope formula. You always be given that formula. You don't have to memorize it. And I didn't either, but that's a Y1. <laughs> All right, after 30 baseball games, I'll say they hit 20, had 25 hits. If after 100 games, he had 80 hits, what is his average hits per baseball? Okay, so we want to know hits per baseball game. That means our hits is going to be our Y values because in our slope formula, we do Ys over X's, so our baseball games would be our X. So then I'm going to go find my Y1 and Y2. We're looking for hits for Y. So when I read back over this, this is Y1, 25 is Y1, there are 100 games, 80 hits, so this is Y2. So 30 games goes with the 25 hits, so that's X1. Uh, 100 games goes with our Y2. So let me write off those. We've got 30, 25, and 180. So this is X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And I'm plugging it into my formula. We've got 80 minus 25 over 100 minus 30. And what I get here is 55 over 70. Again, 55, 70 hits per baseball game doesn't really tell me a whole lot in this real world scenario. So I'm going to change that to a decimal number. And I get as my rate of change 0.79, and this is hits per game. So now I know that he has 0.79 hits per game. All right, let's look at another example. The function y equals 4.25 plus 2.5 times x minus 1 can be used to determine the cost in dollars of an Uber ride for x miles. What is the rate of change of the cost of dollars respect to the number of miles traveled? So when we are given an actual function, remember rate of change equals slope. So I'm trying to find the slope. And generally, our formulas are y equals mx plus b, and it is my b, I mean my m, the number in front of the x, that is my slope. This time it's written a little bit funny, but I still am looking for where that x is and that number directly in front of that x, and that is my rate of change.